Hey everybody, it's me, Mikey. Anyways, I am here to teach you what it is to be a staunch audiophile. There are some very particular things that you must follow if you are to be of the upper crust of the audiophile group, and I shall share that with you now. So pull up your chairs and let's get ready. First thing, a staunch audiophile. Now I'm talking about a pain in the ass, staunch audiophile that makes no half measures, no room for anything other than two channel purist hi-fi. Me, in other words, and other guys that I hang with. Some of you, without a doubt, unless it's the vintage stuff. You'll never find current big name stuff that's like, that's the famous big names that everybody knows. We don't use it. You know why? Because founder's not there. The heart and soul of that company is, is not there. It has now been taken over by a corporate Goliath. It's a marketing machine. It is simply a business plan to create dividends for the shareholders. That's it. It needs to make more profit every quarter or the CEO is fired. They cheapen the product. That's an easy way to make more profit. You look at the floor, type their name, and then put factory tour. They've got like robots and stuff putting everything together. And just think how much one of those robots costs. These guys need gobs of money to survive. They need tons of, do of dough. How do they bring that dough in? Through their products, of course. They have a well-honed marketing machine. And the people that don't know any better buy their stuff. Look, if I'm an outsider, I've never, I've, I haven't been in hi-fi and I'm going to come into hi-fi and I want to check out the gear. What am I going to do? I'm going to grab a magazine, an enthusiast magazine for hi-fi, or I'm going to look online for an enthusiast website for hi-fi. When I go there, I'm going to get pummeled with advertisements from these big companies that have the huge ad budgets because they put their ads everywhere. You can't miss them. That's why you know their name because it's plastered all over. Well, that ad budget comes costs a lot of money. Those robots cost a lot of money. They have to make tons of profit. If you take one of their products and you start to take it apart and you look at it closely, it's plastic. It's like when it should be metal. They come up with these weird little looking things like they'll have a tweeter or something that doesn't look like a tweeter. It looks like something totally different. They're going to trademark a name for that technology or that item, whatever it is. It's going to be the extra super duper tweeter. They're going to have you believe that it's new technology. It's different, whatever it is, but it's like toothpaste. They need to keep inventing a new package to keep selling the stuff every year after year. Keep things churning and keep you as a consumer that, that they look like they're advancing. They look like they're evolving because they're all this new technology stuff. You can see through 90% of that technology. If I took a magazine right now and I, and I looked at what's the latest technology in a, one of those big name speakers or something like that, it would have these unique names that they've trademarked and I would be able to see through it and I would be able to tell you, look, this means buy wire or this means uh, silver plated copper. They will make extraordinary names for things that are not that extraordinary. It's one way to to have people think that you've got something different is you word it differently and you make it look different. Even if it's doing the same thing, you package it differently and you word it differently. Sure enough, people think it's something brand new. These companies are masters at that. Junk for the most part. Again, Shh. <laughs> this is for the staunch audiophile, not for the mid audiophile. If you really consider yourself a connoisseur, you have a good eye for detail, you have a good ear for detail, you're picky, you're particular, you're staunch, you can be a staunch audiophile. So remember, I'm telling you what it's like being a staunch audiophile. I'm not trying to explain the regular everyday guy that's gonna go buy one of those names and then get pissed when I tell him it's junk. It's junk, trust me. If I can sell you something, and show you something for half the price that whoops its ass. I will guarantee it. Any of the big names. Dude, here's another thing. Think of it. Economy of scale. You've got a small company that does small volume. They can put exotic parts in and really unique things that are not found everywhere. A company that makes 10,000 of something, you know, every three months or something. They need to use parts that are readily available, always available, anywhere, anytime, so they don't run out of parts. They've got to homogenize it to a certain degree where it just uses plain run-of-the-mill parts. 
because those are the easiest to find and they're the less likely to run out. That ought to make sense to you. That's one of the things. The ad budget's another thing, plus the fact that they bought it out from the original founder and now they're eviscerating it and they're gonna peter the product out big time. And then when you come into the marketplace not knowing any better, you're gonna fall for the marketing and you're gonna go, oh, what pretty blue lights. Oh, what pretty unique tweeter. Oh, wow, well, this is the one that is written everywhere in every ad I see, it must be the best. No, the best stuff is the stuff you've never heard about. That's the best stuff. If your product has more than three dealers in the United States, it's probably not top level. The best stuff has very few dealers. Most of it has one distributor for the whole USA. Maybe there's three. LA, New York, Miami, something like that. But that's it. It's not in every town. It's not everywhere. You remember the speakers I showed you? My God, man. Dude, total different build level for less, half price. It's not the big damn names. Those are not the ones. Forget about those. You need to seek out the stuff people don't know about. The best hidden secrets. The small companies. Doesn't matter if they go out of business. This is why I hear people say, well, what if they go out of business? They go out of business, you bought an amplifier. And, and let's say, you know, it breaks. How hard is it to fix a damn amplifier? The freaking technology hasn't changed in 20, 30 years, man. It's simple. Any repairman can fix your damn amplifier. Tube amp is even easier to freaking repair. That's like a hundred year old technology. So don't be scared that you think that because it's a small company, well, where are they going to be in the future? It just doesn't matter, man. Have some balls. Come on. Reach for the gusto. You got to go out on a limb if you want to get any fruit. And that's the truth. The fruit is on the limbs, and that's where the best hi-fi is. So these little names, I find, I'm, I'm good at finding them, man. And I bring them into the United States. The ones I find aren't even in the United States yet. Sometimes they have been for a little bit, but never really, eh. Just so happens, they're like the best products I've ever heard. Nat Audio, one of the ones that I carry. Holy criminy. That amp, that just giant tube amp magma new best amp i've ever heard for sure best amp anybody that was here that listened had ever heard i thought maybe it's just a fluke maybe i'm just you know i don't know maybe i just haven't heard that much stuff i spoke with a guy the other day who um i hope to have on our channel sometime and he is a nat customer and he called me up because i'm the distributor i've never spoken to somebody that has had so many world-class systems he's like a walking encyclopedia of experience with hi-fi like this guy is a major wealth of information. He has had all the top level stuff like he started naming off Wisdom Top of the Line, Wayvac, I mean um, Jade. Every model number name he named was the top one the best that they had to offer. He says, Nat Magma, best amp I've ever heard. Forget about it. And it's less than half of the other ones that were close. The price is phenomenal. Even though you guys think it's crazy that it's that much, you know, 30 some odd thou for a pair of monoblocks. Well, they beat out ones that are 150. The rubber meets the road. It's the little companies. It's the ones you've not heard of. So forget about the big names that you see plastered everywhere. Every dodo buys that gear thinking they've got the highfalutin stuff. And I'm not trying to take away your joy because I'm sure you walk out of the store high as a kite, loving the fact that you just bought the new big name thing at the retail store, you know, Magnolia or whatever. You missed the boat, man. If if you would have just come to somebody like me or some other guys that are trustable advocates for you, we would have steered you towards something that would sound way better and be half the cost. Staunch audiophiles don't buy the big names. We just don't. You won't see them in any of our rooms. You won't. You'll hear a bunch of names that you've never heard of. You'll be like, what? 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 What else? Staunch audiophile. What, what, what's a trait of a staunch audiophile? We move the furniture in the room to suit the audio. So there is no coffee table. What? coffee table. If you have a coffee table in front of you, you're not a freaking staunch audiophile. Sorry, coffee tables, they're, they're what? So it can reflect and sound? It's not there, man. It's not there. Simple as that. We hear the furniture. I can hear that damn couch. I can hear, move that thing, man. It's in the way. Get that table out of here, man. I can hear it. Staunch audiophiles hear the furniture. We move the furniture around to suit our hi-fi rig. That's all there is to it. First things first, and hi-fi comes first. Okay, here's another one. Reviews. You can read reviews. Take it with a grain of salt because anybody can get a good review if they 
really want to. The people giving the reviews in some cases have less experience than the guy at the store. That's another thing. The guy at the store, most of the time, not the owner. The owner's been around a long time. If you ask them, are you an audiophile? If they're honest, a lot of them will say, no, I'm not really. I do this for a living. Definitely the guys that are paid 12 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, they're definitely doing this for a living. They're not audiophiles. They don't even really care. You're lucky if they read the magazines. And then if they read the magazines, they're going to regurgitate the dribble that they're trying to sell, which is the mass market stuff, which we don't want anyways. So reviews um, are part of the machine. People like to write and all that stuff. Hey, it's great. It's good entertainment. Don't read a review and then just rush out to buy something because you read a review. You can't count on it. You can't count on it. In in defense of them, they're not going to say something is good that is a piece of crap because they would be chastised, thrown out. So they don't do that. But what they will do is they'll take regular ordinary stuff and they'll say, end game. Terminator is the end game DAC. I saw that today on YouTube. What a freaking laugh. Terminator is not an end game DAC at all. And then the Aries is a game changer. A $650 DAC is a game changer. Really? What were you using? Nothing? Yeah, it's a game changer. Using uh, your phone? Yeah, it's a game changer. But in the world of hi-fi, it's nowhere near. It does an image. These things are copies of other products. I know exactly the models that they copy that R2R from. So it's like, it's 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 funny. But they go around stouting and it's clickbait. It gets you to click because, oh, game changer this, game changer that. Everything's embellished and it's all blown out of proportion. It's not like that, man. You want to see something that blows your tits off. Come over here and sit down and listen. You will be so screwed up after you leave here because you'll just be scratching your head like, what the hell just happened? happened. It's hi-fi. It's real hi-fi. Real hi-fi is something that not many people... Look, you can go to a hi-fi show and out of 500 rooms, there's going to be five, maybe 10 max that is real world-class hi-fi that has, that has the sound dialed to where they've got the it factor. It's hard to come by. Trust me. It's I spend months getting my stuff dialed in. Look, it's been years and I'm still not where I'm going with this damn thing. I know in the back of my head all the other things that I have to do to this rig. It sounds great right now, but it's nowhere uh, uh, close to where it's going to be a year, maybe two years from now when I'm able to finally do all the stuff in my mind that I you know, need to do or want to do. It's very hard to come by a good hi-fi rig. The, the dealers, you go by the, the brick and mortars, Oh my God, the rooms sound freaking horrible. When I was at a dealer, brick and mortar, and it was, we're in the big room, and I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. And I was looking around at the, the other people that were there, because it was like a meeting, you know, um, for the audiophiles. And um, and they're like, no, nah, they're bobbing their head, and you know, they're folks that are older than me. And I felt like, man, someone's taking advantage of these old folks, man, and teaching them that this is good hi-fi. These poor people are nodding their head, and they think this is good hi-fi, and this sounds like ass. Oh, my God. If you get lucky, you get a reference. You get to sit down and listen to a reference, and that resets everything for you, boy. You're like, okay, oh, wow, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. I never heard anything like that, but now I get it. That was an extension of not believe, not not paying attention to reviews and just kind of taking that with a grain of salt. Realize that when you go into the stores, you're probably not going to get a proper demo. Most likely, they're going to try and cram down whatever they're getting the steak knives on this year, or I mean this month. Back to staunch audiophile ism. A staunch audiophile never uses a piece of gear that has multi-channel functionality. I'm sorry, you don't need surround sound when you've got a kick-ass rig. That's all there is to it. There is no place for DSP and the dam and... I know I'm going to get a bunch of people wigging out right now that love their little DSP thing with the open baffles and all that stuff. It's cool. It's fun. Yes, it's kitschy, whatever. It's probably awesome, okay? I'm biased against it, okay? I don't like it. True audiophiles, staunch audiophiles, no freaking way. There's not going to be any multi-channel anything. There's just not going to be. You're going to have... It's a two-channel rig. You may have quad amp you may quad amp it you may put it into each an amplifier for every single driver okay you may use a crossover okay analog i actually may start using 
and EQ for shits and giggles. I'm gonna start recording my own things. I have a tape machine. I'm gonna start making my own recordings. I wanna EQ stuff and I wanna play around a little bit. And I wanna try EQ in the rig and just see how, how it is. I don't um, feel that I need it, but I wanna check it out. There is no multi-channel anything, especially processors, if you're a staunch audiophile. You take the passive hard way on everything. You don't change the room with uh, Odyssey room correction software and a microphone and automatically does it. Hell no, man. You do it the hard way. You put freaking treatments on the wall and then measure and then put this thing. It is painstaking process, but we prefer to do it the passive way, the hard way, because it feels different. There's something more natural to me about treating a room passively with treatments than it is to treat it actively with room correction software. Something doesn't feel right about it to me. And it's like not something I can really explain other than one seems more natural and organic and the other one doesn't. You're not going to see any multi-channel anything in a staunch audiophiles rig. You just won't. Because being a staunch audiophile is also being a purist. Okay, here's another thing. You don't have one of anything. I'll say that again. There's nothing that I have that's hi-fi related where I only have one of them. A pair of speakers, DAC, preamp, tube amp whatever. I have multiples of everything any staunch audiophile does. Why? Because we like to change our rigs, man. We like to listen to tubes sometimes. We like to listen to solid state other times. We like to, we, we want to have an example of a single-ended triode. Sometimes we want to pull out this single-ended triode. Maybe somebody has never heard a single-ended triode and we want to show them what it sounds like because it's cool. You never find a guy that's got one of anything. We just, we don't. We keep them for different times, different days, different moods. We want to try some. I just feel like changing the rig around today. I've got enough stuff in here, this room, that I could change the rig around every day for probably better than a year. Just different combinations of things. What does this DAC sound like with these speakers and that amp? Oh, wow, that's really good. Oh, no, not so good on that one. We do that all the time. We change it around and listen and check it out. It's fun. Being a staunch audiophile. Oh, I get in trouble for saying that. Um, I'm going to say it anyways. Being a staunch audiophile, the super duper staunch ones know that magnetic tape kicks ass on vinyl. You can have a way better sounding master recording rig than you can a vinyl for the same price than a vinyl. Vinyl is probably 10 times the cost of of tape. The problem is the source material. You got nothing really with tape. Unless you've got some connections for trade, you're really going to be very limited on your material. It's going to sound way better, but you're limited on the material. And it also depends, okay, depends on the on the tape deck you have and your outboard gear as compared to the vinyl. There clearly is vinyl rigs that will beat a tape rig, but I'm talking about apples to apples, okay? Same hierarchy, you know? Best tape rig beats the best vinyl rig. Vinyl is a lossy format. You all know that, you know, I mean, to make it work on a disc whereby it's covering more area, you know, linear uh, area on, on the outside of this thing than it is near the core where it only has to go around a little bit more. You know, it's, it's, it's non-linear totally. Just the fact that they have to remaster the music to make it for vinyl and take crap out, that should be a sign. Here's another one that's going to piss some people off. Staunch Audiophile does not use Chinese clone gear, okay? Most Chinese stuff that you see that's in the hi-fi arena, it's clone, it's cloning. They clone something else. They really don't innovate in hi-fi uh, just as a general thing. They copy stuff and they clone it. They do a pretty damn good job at it. But I don't want the damn copy. I want the original. Do you want a freaking kit Ferrari or do you want the real Ferrari? Well, the true aficionado is gonna have the real Ferrari. They're not they're gonna they're, they're not gonna want the, the kit car that's the you know, the copy version. You know, if you find yourself saying, yeah, I know it's good sound. Um, it's, it's for the, for the money or, 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 you know, yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty good for, for chi being a Chinese amp or whatever. If you're making excuses because it's Chinese gear, but it sounds good, but you know, it's Chinese. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, I suggest going with the originators, the innovators of the product rather than the ones that clone it and don't know how to tune it because you need to know how to tune each particular circuit. It's not just making the circuit and putting all the parts in there. It's knowing how to tune it afterward to make that circuit sing. And if there's one thing I've seen a million times is Chinese gear that should sound way better. It, it's got all the stuff in there and it's got all the parts and it looks great and it is beautiful inside there in the circuit, but it's not tuned. You look at it and go, man, this thing could be twice as good 
with a couple modifications, a couple tweaks. If you know how to do that, you're adept at it. Well, hey, you're way ahead of the game. But most of the time, it's a it's a it's a it's a clone that is not tuned. So staunch audio files, you will not see Chinese product anywhere near the rig. And I'm talking about the main components, not like the little wires or whatever. Obviously, you know their iPhone is Chinese, you know. Um, so and that has nothing to do with people at all, anything like that. It has to do with product itself and the result of it. They don't sound good enough. That's all there is to it. They're not game changers and they're not end game, okay, for the staunch audio file that is. I think that's about enough. I gotta be real with you. I've gotta be real with you and I don't know any other way to be, to, 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 to say it than to just say it, man. You know, but no, you guys need to be pointed so like, don't go there, okay? Don't go there, don't go there. Okay, if you want to be, if you truly, if you want the greatest stuff, okay? Otherwise, you just look at the marketing and stuff, you're gonna be confused and you're gonna end up buying something that costs too much for what it is. You can get better deals if you go to the stuff you haven't heard about. So if you stick by the Hi-Fi tribe, you'll learn. Anything I offer you that I sell, I guarantee that it's of the world-class Hi-Fi variety. None of it is run of the mill. I guarantee you that. I've got your back, the bottom line, because I essentially feel like I fight for the Hi-Fi, for the real Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi, I can stop right there, for the real Hi-Fi. I fight for the real Hi-Fi. I get angry when I see the way things are worded and all the all the stuff, all the fluff just pisses me off because I know people are getting taken advantage of. And it's people that love music and those are my homeboys. And so, you know, I'm gonna have to take care of them. So anyways, that's that. I wish it was more jolly, but maybe I could do a dance. <laughs> oh boy, see ya. <laughs>